It's time for Film Room with Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell brought to you by Twin City Orthopedics. Now, coach, missing J.J. going to Chicago, you knew it was going to be tough, but it had to feel good to see the defense step up the way that they did. Yeah, we talked about it as a team the night before the game. Response was our word. Uh, regardless of what happened the previous play, uh, whoever was out on the grass on the very next snap, respond, go set the tone for the rest of the day. And we saw it show up time and time again with our defense. So this first play was a critical, critical play. Uh, we had just kind of uh, had a, a play against us. Kirk got his arm hit and, and kind of was uh, a, 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 you know, a sudden change for the defense off of uh, a kind of a criti critical minus play for our offense. And these guys step on the field. They make a couple plays as they drive down the field. And then uh, we end up teeing up a look right here where we essentially are using uh, Daniil Hunter as an interior rusher now where we're having Josh Metellus on the edge. Uh, Jordan Hicks is really matching the back. But all we're trying to do is simulate some of our pressure looks. Is it zero? Is it a simulated uh, pressure like we got Carolina with towards the end of the game? And, and really, how is Chicago going to adjust? So as we play this, uh, you're really going to see uh, a real problem for the offense. They end up turning Daniil Hunter loose on the halfback, which allows Jordan Hicks, as we replay this one more time, uh, to just kind of be in coverage. Uh, he's in coverage on the back. That back blocks. Now he can free up and help with those in breakers. Sees the ball go up in the air. But how about the Willie Mays style catch <laughs> over his shoulder right there? Uh, and then a nice little return. We end up turning this into a touchdown in the two minute. But let's take a look at it from the end zone. And you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. Daniil is going to be on the rush. This is what having guys like Josh Metellus coming off the edge will do. It really buys the attention of uh, the tackle right there. And he's going to essentially, uh, Pete, he's going to slide out. And the rest of the line is going to essentially be sliding down right here to handle uh, the other eligibles. But what happened right there was a pretty catastrophic problem. You're going to end up putting Daniil Hunter on the halfback. So uh, sure, not that that's not the way they drew this up. No. Uh, but as we see it, the C's part. And uh, there goes Daniil, not hesitating at all, affecting the passer. And then when that ball is in the air, the ability for Jordan to finish that play, uh, defense become an offense in a hurry, ball security through the end of the down, and then we get this thing uh, first and 10 with our three timeouts left. The ability to push the ball uh, down the field in the two minute is something we love to do, uh, kind of controlling that middle eight as best as we could. Getting the touchdown to Jordan Addison, which we'll take a look at right now, was critical. Uh, and speaking of that play, Pete, uh, this is kind of at the tail end of really trying to do two things. We want to possess the ball. We want to kind of systematically work the ball down the field, using up every second o'clock we can, but still preserve enough to be able to attack the end zone uh, before, you know, hopefully not having to settle for three. I right. uh, wanted to be aggressive on this down right here. We get the ball just inside the 10. Uh, we're essentially going to be running a concept uh, where TJ is going to be working across the field. Uh, Jordan's going to inside release, push up, and run an outbreak in the end zone. Uh, and then we've got kind of a separate concept on the backside uh, to try to control the backside, but also come to life versus man coverage. Expecting kind of a two deep shell. And when you look at that, you're really thinking you're going to have uh, a two deep safety look down there. We, we got this in the red zone uh, on the day. Didn't get as much of it uh, as we thought uh, in the field, which uh, required us to kind of make some adjustments yep. in game. Uh, but really all we're doing is when you're playing too deep, you know this corner is responsible for really that flat area of the field. So once Jordan uh, releases inside, we want to make sure we get TJ over there to try to put him in conflict. And when we do that, all Kirk is really looking at is this little pocket of the field back here, seeing if there's a nice little rhythm throw that we can drive that ball in. And I thought this was just elite execution by the guys. Jordan getting a great amount good. We want him to get halfway in the end zone to give us, uh, you know, really enough space back there that we can isolate him away from that safety uh, who's going to be inside leverage working to him. And now this is the beauty of it. You can really put this defender in a bind right there. Does, you know, does he feel uh, TJ's route working across the field and try to step up on that or does he feather off and uh, what happened right there is he kind of was in no man's land and Kirk just being aggressive and really as good of a throw uh, as you can make in this moment when you see it from the end zone not to bypass Jordan's end zone dance right there uh, but you'll see really good protection by the guys up front Great firm right there you see the, the clean pocket but what I want people to see right here is really Kirk's lower body and just see how grounded he is he's really going to use this first kind of subtle hitch to really set the defense 
bang, and then look at how grounded he is, ready to just transition. You'll see that front foot go, and right about now, anticipation is always key. You see Jordan up there setting that route. He comes out of it. Kirk drives it right in that window, tight window passing in the red zone. Not always easy to do versus split safety kind of vision coverage. Thought our guys executed that really, really well right and there. Thought it was great how Addison won at Brisker yep. just to get him to get on his heels. Yep, set him, and then set broke that away. defender, and then be able to run out of it. And when you're able to kind of transition that interception into points, uh, it only ignites the defense even more to go try to get one more. What do you know? Same, very similar look to what we saw uh, before. Uh, some of the big guys just in different spots right here. But now we're going to get kind of what a lot of teams have gone to, trying to go to more of a max protection uh, kind of shot look. You're going to see, once again, just a little bit of chaos up front with Metellus being shot out of the cannon up top right there. They are trying to max protect this ribbon, uh, getting this tight end out uh, late right here. But really, we can now overlap coverage. Jordan Hicks, you'll see him. He's really kind of free to roam now. Uh, and what, why that's important is what's about to transpire. Harrison Phillips comes free, forces the quarterback off the spot. Metellus beats his protection man, and uh, he's able to get the ball free, the scoop and score. And then right about now, uh, you might, you, I, I want everybody to take a look at that guy right there. We showed him rushing the quarterback earlier, causing havoc for, for the interception. Watch Daniel Hunter open up his stride right here, running <laughs> about a 4-4 to get out in front of this thing, and he really seals this thing to allow Jordan to just kind of cruise into the end zone right there. But as we look at it, from the end zone, you'll see similar type of look. We've got the five bigs in there with Metellus up around the line of scrimmage, uh, hauling off the edge right there. And now, uh, from a protection standpoint, uh, they're going to try to make sure that we're not going to allow that happen again. So we're going to make sure the tackle is going to, and the guard and tackle are going to work out there. But this is where their issue was now. Kyrus Tonga working the A gap is essentially going to be double teamed, which will open up the weak side A gap. And that's a problem when you get big Harrison Phillips free. The back thinks he's coming over for the DB. He certainly, for the second time in the game, doesn't want to have to handle a 300 pound right. man in an A gap. So he bypasses that. We get the quarterback off the spot. Metellus, though, how about that? Defeating that block uh, right there. Uh, really from a tackle, a pretty good player and able to finish at the ball. You see him going right at the hands of the quarterback, raking at the ball, just technically sound. Uh, Josh Metellus has been huge for us all year, but when we had to have it, there's two captains for us, Josh Metellus and, of course, Jordan Hicks making a critical, critical play for so us. So Hicks makes a couple big plays, but it's awesome to see you have Metellus, who's become our safeties are basically outside linebackers. Yeah. It's a new position you guys have created, so congratulations. <laughs> But Metellus with the hook and the strip sack, and then he's pointed out to Neil. It really takes 11 guys, doesn't it? It does, especially in our defense. And what did we probably not talk about enough in either one of those plays was the coverage on the back end. You know, we, we had some injuries throughout the game. Guys like Andrew Booth, uh, Makai Blackman stepping in. Byron Murphy was really shadowing DJ Moore as much as we could possibly have him do. Uh, Harrison Smith on the back end working with Cam Bynum, which allows Metellus to be so active around the line of scrimmage. So whether you're talking about Harry around the line of scrimmage, Metellus, uh, Cam Rome in the middle of the field, that safety position uh, has been massive for us in how we've built the defense. And uh, it helps uh, when you got Big 99, uh, you know, winning a lot of his matchups or in some cases getting matched up with the running back. All right, we'll be back with another edition of Film Room with Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell very soon.